Before severe weather can occur, we need a thunderstorm to form in the first place. And we want to go over here the four ingredients of thunderstorm formation. The first on the upper left is moisture. And typically in this part of the country, we increase our moisture through southerly flow from the Gulf of Mexico. The second ingredient, instability. This just refers to cold air atop relatively warm air at the surface, just causing the air to become more buoyant as that warm air wants to lift more easily. The third ingredient, a lift or trigger. This is just something that forces the air upward. And in this part of the country, that can be a warm front, a cold front, an upper level jet streak, for example. And the fourth ingredient is wind shear. This just refers to the wind changing direction or speed with height. And we have a star next to wind shear because it's not necessary for thunderstorms to form in the first place. Just when we talk about severe weather, typically wind shear is a key ingredient for severe weather, not necessarily thunderstorm formation. And we'll talk about wind shear later. The entire life cycle of a thunderstorm can occur in approximately 30 minutes, although this amount of time will vary from case to case. The life cycle of a thunderstorm can be broken down into three main stages, the developing cumulus stage, the mature cumulus stage, and the dissipating stage. The first stage, the developing cumulus stage, your initial updraft will form where the air will begin to rise, little to no rain is reaching the ground, no severe weather is occurring, and this developing cumulus stage will last about 10 minutes. In the diagram on the right, you can see these yellow arrows represent that initial updraft forming or the air wanting to rise. The purple dashed line represents your freezing line. You can see much of that updraft is below the freezing line or warmer than, than freezing. So you really don't have any evidence here of any precipitation falling from the base of that cloud. And this is what you would see here in terms of the cloud features with the developing cumulus stage. Typically, since you have this updraft forming, you'll get fairly sharp edges to the cloud tops here, indicating a lot of liquid water content. That's just something that's favorable here for thunderstorms to develop a lot of liquid water, and you can see these sharp edges in the cloud tops indicate that. Looking at the base of the cloud, you can see no evidence of any rainfall here in this initial developing cumulus stage. Next, in the mature cumulus stage, we're talking about a much stronger updraft, both in its magnitude and also how high in the atmosphere it's reaching. You can see here up to about 40,000 feet. And this stronger updraft will support more rainfall, and that rainfall will reach the ground in the mature cumulus stage. That rain which forms in the upper levels of the atmosphere, that rain-cooled air becomes so heavy that the weight of it can no longer be supported, and the rain just comes to the ground. And we also get a downdraft form from that rain-cooled air, which eventually hits the ground and spreads out in a radial direction. And this blue line here represents a mini cold front. That's just the leading edge of that downdraft rain cooled air. And this stage can last about 10 to 20 minutes, the mature cumulus stage. And in this stage, we can have uh, much of our severe weather occur, both in the form of damaging winds from this uh, downdraft rain cooled air, and also large hail. This updraft um, can support large hail formation. So the fact we have this updraft and downdraft together, we can pretty much support all modes of severe weather. If you were looking at a distance uh, from this storm in the mature cumulus stage, this is, might be what you see. This storm much more vertically developed. You can see very sharp edges to your cloud tops. In this case, since our storm was, uh, the updraft is above the freezing line, you can see that this is probably indicative of a lot of liquid water, super cooled water, and ice in the storm. And looking at the base of the cloud here, you can see more evidence that you probably have precipitation falling from the base of that cloud. The third and final stage is the dissipating stage. In the dissipating stage, the downdraft becomes strong enough where the updraft can no longer be sustained. So we're typically talking just downdraft at this point. And the threats at the dissipating stage include minor wind, heavy rain, and lightning. We don't list hail as a threat at this stage because hail really feeds off that updraft and that's been dissipating by now. We can get some isolated damaging wind gusts in the dissipating stage just because these strong downdraft winds can still be a threat, so damaging wind gusts are still a threat. Um, other storms may develop along that cold front which kind of mark the, the leading edge of that downdraft air, so other storms may develop along that gust front. And if we were looking at a storm going through with the dissipating stage, one thing to really notice here is that these cloud tops, which look so sharp, indicating liquid water, super cooled water and hail in the earlier stages, now we have a more frayed appearance, more of a fuzzy look to the cloud tops, indicating not as much 
liquid super cooled water or ice in the storm. All of that water has kind of come down to the surface. The updraft not nearly as strong. That's what's being indicated by those fuzzier cloud tops. So by looking at this, we would not suspect severe weather as high of a probability, maybe just still some isolated damaging wind gusts. The next few slides here deal with the role of wind shear, which we talked about earlier was an ingredient for severe thunderstorms. On the left here, we'll look at an example where wind shear is not that strong. We, we have wind profiles here on the left, a westerly wind at the surface and a westerly wind at higher levels in the atmosphere, not much stronger than at the surface. So we really don't have much change of wind with height and not much shear. And what happens in this scenario is your updraft and downdraft will approximately be located in the same position. So you get an updraft form, that rain cooled air will cause sinking motion and eventually kill your updraft fairly quickly. So you really can't get a long lasting storm to develop. Now on the right, let's look at a case where you have westerly winds near the ground but the, those westerly winds increase dramatically at higher levels in the atmosphere and this is what we call a highly sheared environment and what happens in this case is that updraft becomes tilted due to that wind shear so your rainfall and your downdraft will occur at a different location than your updraft and so your downdraft won't kill your updraft right away the fact that this wind shear can help separate the updraft and downdraft just means there's a, a longer duration threat for an organized severe weather. And th another role that this uh, wind shear plays is it can help rotate your updraft, which is another ingredient for severe weather, in particular tornadic storms. When we talk about a rotating updraft, it's a little easier to visualize by looking at this diagram. We have that same westerly wind at the surface, which becomes much stronger at higher levels in the atmosphere. And you almost can see that creates somewhat of a rotor effect and that you have a lot of rotation, a horizontal rotation in this case. And if you can imagine an updraft beginning to lift this horizontal rotation, that horizontal rotation can eventually be oriented in the vertical, which would increase the tornadic threat. And one last diagram showing the role of wind shear. In a conceptual model of a thunderstorm, here you can see your, your wind shear profile on the left here an easterly wind at the surface and a strong westerly wind in the upper levels of the atmosphere indicating a high amount of wind shear. And so your updraft and downdraft in this case will be separated due to the high amounts of wind shear. And again, the fact that you have these updrafts and downdrafts separated, that just allows for a longer duration severe weather threat.